In this video, we're gonna be going over custom modules within Zoho CRM. Uh, these are one of our favorite features about the CRM as it allows you to really customize everything that you need right into the platform so you're able to track it, relate it to other records, and manage your overall processes and data set. Before I jump in, I do want to ask if you find this video useful, please be sure to like and subscribe down below. And if you find yourself getting stuck, needing a little bit of help with Zoho, just head on over to Zanata.com and click on that book a meeting button and we'll be chatting in no time about how we can help. So without any further ado, let's jump on in. Within the CRM, one of the best things about the platform is the ability to create our own custom modules. So out of the gate in a CRM, of course, you're going to have leads, contacts, accounts, deals. You're going to have your activities like tasks, meetings, and calls. You'll have that default module for items and services. But what you might find is that there's certain pieces of data that you want to track that are not available in CRM out of the gate. And one of, again, the best things about Zoho CRM is the ability to create those on the fly. So if we were to look inside of our, you know, this demo account here, we can see a couple that we've already made, like deal items, bundle templates, right? These different modules that are totally custom to our usage of CRM. So what we're going to do today is jump into how exactly to create one of these. I'll give you a couple tips on best practices. We'll go through how to link them to other modules that are already in the system. And then we'll kind of see one of them in action. We'll, we'll fill it out. We'll, we'll see where it shows up. So inside of settings underneath customization, we can jump into modules and fields. And within here, up in the top right, is where we can create a new module. So in this case, I'm going to create a module that we're going to call Jobs. So this would be in a scenario where maybe after a deal is closed one, we want to have a new record that's going to manage the fulfillment of that work. One of the reasons that we're going to make it a separate module, rather than just adding it as the back half of a deal, is that there are cases where a deal might actually require multiple jobs. Maybe this is something we're going to do once a month. Maybe this is something where there's going to be a part two and a part three, right? And so we'll go in, we'll create a new module. Up in the top left, we'll give it a name. So we'll call this jobs. Then we'll make that down below the singular version. As we're creating this module, one tip that I always have is to come in and create what I call the record information section and drag some of this system info down, just that you're not gonna need every single time you open this up. So I'm just gonna grab things like the owner, or the created by, right, things like that, and I'm gonna remove them. Or I should say I'm gonna move them down. Now, a couple of these other fields, we're just gonna remove. We don't need an email in the job. We don't need an email opt-out in this record. So we're just gonna get rid of those. So now we have like a nice clean baseline for creating this new module. Now, one of the things we're gonna wanna think through before we get started on anything else is how do we wanna handle the name of these records, right? So underneath this job information under the three dots, if I go into edit properties, I can choose to just make this an auto numbering field. So I could say, hey, let's just call this job one, job two, job three. Or you might determine, you know what, I want to give these a name that's descriptive of what this job is, and so I'll leave it as a text value. The reason I always like to highlight this is that once I save this module, I can't change this anymore. I have to make that decision right out of the gate before I move forward with anything else. Over here on the left is where we're going to have all of the data fields that we're able to add to this module. And so, for example, maybe you want to have a custom job name but you like that idea of having a job number, I can go ahead and just add a, a uh, auto number field. If we look over here on the left, there's a bunch of different field types. We're not gonna go through each and every one of those, but I am gonna highlight a few that you're gonna use all the time. So one of them is gonna be a multi-line. Maybe here we'll have something like a job description. Maybe we'll drag in a pick list for something like job status. Maybe we'll add a couple options here. Just some basic job statuses. Maybe we'll have some dates. These are always an important one. So like job start date and job completion date. Now what I'm going to do is add a section and I'm going to call this the relational information. 
And so what are we gonna use this for? Well, in the relational information section, we're gonna add some data that's gonna tell us who this job is for, which deal created this job, who our primary contact is for it. And to do that, I'm gonna use these lookup fields. So first I'll drag in a lookup field. I'll say, what am I looking up? I'm gonna look up the account. That's just the name of the field. We're gonna choose that module and then we're gonna give a related list title. Now, I'm gonna highlight a common mistake that we see all the time. People say account, uh, no. So this related list title is what is going to show up on the account page where that list of jobs is. So I'm actually gonna call that related list the jobs list. I'm gonna do the same thing here for contacts. Now, sometimes here I'll call this like primary contact because you might have a couple at that organization that are relevant. Related list, also just gonna be named jobs. And then we'll drag in one more lookup for the deal where this job was originated. Now, I like to put these in a separate section. You don't have to do that. They could just be up here under the primary job information. I've just always found that as I'm creating a new module, using sections to kind of group the data makes life a lot easier for me later as I start to add more and more fields and, and kind of configure more about this module itself. Now, a couple other things that I will just highlight over here on the left that are pretty darn useful. You do have the ability to add subforms. So a subform would essentially be like a uh, table that lives on this record. So maybe I wanna add like the products that are gonna be relevant for this job. So in here, I can come in, I can choose a lookup. Maybe I'll have this look up my items table. So make that selection. Here I can now, because I've added a lookup, a little crash course on subforms, I can actually just pull things directly from that subform itself. And then maybe just like a quantity, right? There's always gonna be more that you'll wanna customize in here, but just wanna do kind of a quick overview for you so you can get an understanding. So now I've created this module. I've added some of that core information up here at the top. I have added my relational information. Now let's save this and kind of see where it shows up in the system. So whenever we make a module, we will need to choose which permission sets are gonna be active for this. I'm just gonna include all of them in this case. So just like that, I've now essentially created an entirely new database inside of my CRM. And so there's now gonna be a couple different ways that jobs can be created. So I can go directly to the jobs module and create a record manually just like this, right? Filling in any of these fields that I need to and saving the record. What realistically happens more often than not is that you're gonna create one of these from within an existing record, right? So here I'm inside of my deal. I'm gonna grab this jobs related list and just move it all the way up to the top just to make life a little bit easier for me. And here, now I can go ahead and create a job from within a deal. Now I'll choose my contact here. I'm just gonna grab some standard data. Let's call this a job for Zanata. This could be like our, you know, implementation of CRM, let's say. This job status is open. We're gonna start it on the 22nd and we're gonna complete it at the end of November. Now I'll save this. And what we'll see is now I have this job record linked up to my deal. Um, one nice thing to do when you create these is come into these related lists and set some of the uh, fields that you would like to show up. Um, so I like things like start date, maybe completion date, just so I get a fleshed out view of this job as I'm looking for at it from within a particular deal. But what I'll also highlight is that if I were to open up the account, that job is also listed here. Now, again, they always add themselves way down here at the bottom of your related list. So you can move it up or kind of choose exactly where you want this to land. But at the end of the day, you have this record in your system now that's going to be available for usage. You can use this in reporting. You can use this in dashboards, really anywhere across the platform as you need it. You can also oftentimes sync this to third party tools if you needed to write a little API integration. These really just work exactly like the baseline modules, except that they are unique and customized for your particular requirements. Now, one last thing that I will highlight with the custom modules is if we go into our settings, 
These work the same as our primary modules where things like our mail merge templates, our email templates, really all of those are going to be unique for this particular module. So if I come in and create an email template, now jobs is gonna be one of the modules that a template is created for. Same thing for things like mail merge, right? If I come in, I'm able to create a template for this particular custom module. So maybe you have like some job summary PDF that you like to send out to people. You could create that here and use the data that's available in the jobs module as you're populating it. Same thing as we look at pulling reports. If I come in and create a report, I have access to use jobs. Of course, I can pull like the parent record. So if I wanted deals or accounts or really anything that I've added as lookups, I'm able to do that from directly within my reports. They also function the same way as any of the other records when it comes to tasks and activities. So I can have particular tasks, meetings, and calls that are specifically connected to this job. One thing I will highlight that is a little different with the jobs than the other custom modules is how certain data rolls up. So this is one downside for custom modules. If I were to come in as an example, and let's say I take a note on a deal, that note is actually gonna roll up to my other records. So if I take a note on a deal, and I say example deal note, that shows up on my deal, but if I go into my account, it's also going to be there, right? It's rolled up from this deal into my account. Unfortunately, this does not hold true for things like custom modules. So if I leave this note in a custom module and then I go to the account from here, we will not see that roll up occur. Now there are some workarounds here. You can add like a custom related list. You could write a little script that like copies that note up. So there are workarounds, but I do wanna highlight that is one little minor downside. It is kind of the same thing with emails. So if I were to send out an email from a deal, that will show up on the account automatically. Um, if I send an email from a job, it will technically kind of roll up because it will sync to the contact and the contact syncs to the account, but it does just look a little bit different. So you wanna be aware of that as you are using these, that there are just a couple of those areas where you won't get the same exact functionality as a primary system module. So just make that determination kind of as you're deciding if you need one. Right, So there are cases where, hey, maybe the, the roll up of email information is super important. Well, then let's keep the job as part of a deal. But maybe you determine, hey, that doesn't really matter for me. And I, I like the idea of it being separate. In that case, feel free to move forward with a job um, or a custom module to track that particular piece of data. So with that, I think we've covered everything we need to here for custom modules. Uh, I really do hope that this video was useful. Uh, if it was, be sure to like and subscribe down below. That really does help us out. And if it sparks any questions, feedback, or additional video requests, leave those in the comment section down below that like button as we do try to read and respond to as many of those as we can get to every single week. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye.